ready for it. Doubt screams, what if? Faith says, I already know it. But what good is a mustard seed if you never sow it? Rise up, we finna move this mountain from that whole shit. To join to the subconference, press number of subconference from 1 to 9. Press star to return to the conference. To join to the subconference, press number of subconference from 1 to 9. Press star to return to the conference. To join to the subconference, press number of subconference from 1 to 9. Press start. This service is provided in high definition by free conference call hd.com. Please enter your access code followed by the pound or house sign. Access code accepted. The recording has started. Good evening, good evening, y'all. I'm so glad you decided to join me. You are tuned in this evening to Late Night with Dr. Chanel Stewart, and I am your host. I want you to get ready because the guests I have have here in the studio tonight will be phenomenal. Just the conversation that we're about to have. The lovely Miss Zion, the boys, is here tonight. We are live, so make sure that you like, share, and support this podcast by sharing it with your friends and your family. Um, like right now, like right now, go ahead and share that right now. And uh, make sure that you are uh, tuned in because you don't want to miss this interview. The topic we'll be discussing tonight is a sensitive one, um, but if given the chance, um, can really help to um, value yourself, you know. Um, knowing your true identity and self-worth is so important. And I think it's it's a discussion that you hear me talk about a lot. You, you hear um, me, whether I'm in an interview or whether I'm interviewing someone, because I, I think it's so vital for, you know, transformation that we must go through in order to keep, keep going forward in God. So um, tonight, me and Zion will go deep in order to help bring somebody out. And I pray that this is a blessing and and that the seeds that are planted continues to sprout good fruits in your life. And we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we will bring on our special guest of the evening, Zion The Voice. We're not going to make you wait all night to hear from her. We're going to bring her right in as soon as we come back from the break. So stay locked. We'll be right back after this. You are listening to Gary Orsai Worldwide Podcast.
listening to Gary Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of Devil XI. Great, awesome. Welcome back. You are tuned in to Late Night with Dr. Chanel Stewart. And I have a special guest in the studio tonight. If you all have been following me on social media, then you've seen the flyers that I put out. Yes, I did them. I, I you know, I dabble and dabble a little bit. I, I think I know what I'm doing. But anyway, you've seen the flyer put out. Um, and we're going to talk about that flyer because we're going to talk about that picture because Zion got this nice and yeah, I, I want to know a little bit about that. <laughs> uh, she's dangerous, y'all, but dangerous in them and and against the kingdom. Um, I mean, for the kingdom of God. I'm sorry. Um, so we, we are excited to have her on. So if you're not following me, you haven't seen the flyers. Well, then shame on you, and you hurt my feelings. But you can make up for it by doing uh, by sharing and and uh, making sure that you are liking and letting people know to come on in here and uh, hear this podcast, hear um, this special guest of tonight, and get something that they need. All right, so this is a great time to make sure that you're liking and sharing. Uh, um, but um, from now on, then you will get updates and uh, you'll know what's happening once you like the page. So go like the page. All right, guys. I, Thank you so much for your support. I know you love me. I love love you back. And um, I'm excited to get started. So um, if uh, you have not read it, I'm going to, you know, come from the the uh, bio a little bit so that you guys who have not um, been able to read it are able to hear a little bit about Miss Zion before I bring her on. And I'm stalling a little bit because I don't have it pulled up right Right now, and I'm getting it done now. All right, Zion, the voice hails from the city of New Orleans, where music is infused in every part of the culture. Growing up in a family infused by jazz and blues, Zion began to take her great grandfather's legacy of music. What started for her is a pure curiosity, quickly developed into a beautiful relationship of melody, chords, lyrics, and beats. Music quickly became Zion's muse and her outlet the challenges that life presented her as an adolescent. Her love for music began to lead her to perform with groups such as The Bomb, Hot Outlet, and Monthly Cyphers with some of the most influential artists in hip-hop. In 1999, as Zion, then known as Flex, pursued her career, getting ready to sign a deal with Universal Records, God had another plan. Zion walked away from the deal to pursue God in the call on her life. Since then, Zion has dealt with many ups and downs in her walk with God, but she attributes it to the calling on her life. Out of her pain, she has birthed a ministry called Beautifully Scarred, Gracefully Broken. This ministry is to bring healing and restoration to lesbians, women, and young ladies who deal with identity and self-worth. Zion's pain has birthed forth compassion to see lives that are broken to be restored, revived, and delivered and reset. The mantle of this process prophetic prayer and deliverance makes her a weapon of mass destruction in the hand of the Father. When asked about her journey, she will say that she was made in the dark room and prepared in the sheep fields. Woo! We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that one. We present to some and introduce to others, Miss Zion the Voice. How you doing, sis? Oh, uh, Dr. T. Is that all right for Dr. T tonight? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Okay, okay. What's going on? It's such a pleasure to be on the line with you tonight and with everyone. And I'm just looking forward to getting into it. Amen. Amen. I've been trying to get you for a minute, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, in, in time, you know, I'm so busy. You're busy. I'm busy. 
Or, yeah. you know, I believe that tonight is an appointed time for us to, to get get into some stuff and, and um, somebody specifically is listening tonight that's going to get what they need. Oh, amen. Yes, okay. yes. Yes. Amen. So I want to get right into it because I want to waste no time with you. I want to give all the opportunity for us to go ahead and get into the discussion. Um, you... I have a motto on the show, and it is that can't nobody tell our story like we can. And even mm-hmm. though I read your bio, I want to hear from you, and the listeners want to hear from you. So please introduce yourself. Introduce us to Zion the Voice. Okay. Um, well, Zion the Voice um, is is basically uh, we're going to talk about the artistry side first. Zion the Voice is just basically an artist um, with a mandate that got it has given me to really be a voice, of a, a end-time voice, uh, to go out and tell people, to warn people about his coming, his return, but also mm-hmm. to bring restoration and um, and healing and deliverance um, to uh, individuals. And my specific um, target that he has actually given me is women and, and young women um, that have dealt with self-esteem issues and that have dealt with self-worth um, mm-hmm. is my specific target that he's given me to deal with. Amen. Man. Amen. That's beautiful. Because we 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 read in the bio that you grew up on the music scene. And now you're in New Orleans and we know that's a huge uh scene and when that comes up to me, I immediately think about jazz and blues and that's exactly what you grew up around. And you talked a little bit about your um great grandfather. How was he that influence for you um coming into the music scene? What what made you um want to, you know, take that path? Uh, Well, for me, um, I don't know if you know, and if you have any relatives in New Orleans, but you know, everything in New Orleans is around food and music. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So growing up as a kid, uh, anytime we would have functions, my grandmother would pull out out her eight tracks. Um, I know some of y'all probably don't know what that is, millennials, but eight tracks. Um, then she would pull out, you know, um, um, the 45s, and, and mm-hmm. everything was surrounded about music. My grandfather, he was a, a jazz musician, a part of the Preservation Hall. My great grandfather, excuse me, was a part of Preservation Hall um, jazz band, and they were um, a, a jazz band that toured and, and did things like Dizzy Gillespie and um, Ella Fitzgerald, uh, people like that. Um, so we were always influenced. We always had music around us, whether it was in social gatherings or if he was playing. Um, and then uh, we became exposed to it even in high school where we uh, found ourselves, my cousins and I, picking up uh, different instruments. So um, I was trying to be like Prince, but it just didn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yes, man. So that, that influence um, really just um, took me and thrusted me into um, doing uh, music and, and really becoming um, cultivated in, in just everything about it infused with music. My life just became, um, like it says in the Bayou, melodies, beats, um, you know, lyrics, songs, uh, um, everything about it. So, Wow. Well, now I, I can't even imagine. I I like the saying. I love music. Love it. Love it. Love uh, um, jazz. I'm very big into that. I I just love music. I just I haven't been gifted in that area. I haven't been okay. gifted in that area. So so you know, God God. I, I know that God always has a reason for the passions and things that He gives us. So I've been blessed to be able to help those in the music industry and um, be a part of it in that way, you know, you know from the management side and, uh, you know, just helping out in that way. I, I really enjoy um, being able to interact and see the process that, you know, God puts artists through, you know, through their music and stuff, how he ministers. It's so amazing um, to see the back story. And, you know, that's yeah. why I'm so big on the back story. The back story tells so much about um, that person, whether it's an artist or anybody else, um, that person's journey, and that is the thing that changes lives and, and impacts people. Yes, it does. And you know, the other thing about my backstory is that if it wasn't for music, I, I don't think that we actually would be here having this conversation. 
um, wow. because music really became, um, even as it stated in the bio, it really became my outlet. Um, mm-hmm. As an adolescent, I dealt with a lot um, from um, being raped and molested um, to um, actually dealing with my father dying at three, so there was no father figure in the house. And then even my mom, she was still trying to deal. So my mom was, you know, out there doing her thing. Um, and I was really like a latchkey kid, you know, left at wow. home to, to basically kind of take care of the house and, and take care of myself. So it was really um, music that really helped me to deal with the anger and the resentment and the, the bitterness, you know, mm-hmm. and be able to write it and express myself through lyrics. And um, even, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't tell everybody this, but you know, like even the gangster rap, you know, um I was, you know, rapping gangster rap because it was just that hard aggression wanting to just really mm-hmm. get out the pain that I was feeling. Mhm. And that's how a lot of people uh express. And this is this that was your outlet, like you said. Um, so whatever you were saying, whatever you were doing, it was in that time you needed that to release. And yeah. I think that's that's very important. Um, but what's even more important is the fact that you can talk about it now and understand um, what what was happening at that point in time. Because a lot of times when we become Christians, we don't want to share that story or the negative side of things. When we're out there and we, we're doing, you know, things for the Lord, like we're out there on stage and, and different things like that, we don't always tell the dirty, nasty, crazy True. stuff. You, you know, and that's right. exactly, that's the true stuff, the true yeah. stuff. That's what people need. You know, and that's the thing. You, you're so right. You know, a lot of times we, like, sugarcoat everything. You know, we mm-hmm. want to we wanna present people with um, graham crackers and cookies with um, sugar icing <laughs> on it, you know. But uh-huh. Uh-huh. we get to tell them about the fact that you got to eat vegetables that you don't like. You know yeah. um, that you got to eat the broccoli and you got to eat the you know the Brussels sprouts and 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 take those bittersweet moments you know in order to grow in God. You know we just always want to give them false hope um, a lot yeah. of times, and that's why you have an uh, influx of people that leave ministry because you know they've been given false hope. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and I think um, that's an important point because people also come into ministry with that false hope and they're operating in that, uh, you know, so they don't really get the full fulfillment of what it means to really go into something, go into ministry because God ordained you to go in there or God has equipped you to go in there. Because if he hasn't, then you, you're going to quit. I think that yeah. the, the biggest, the thing that pushes us is the hurt, the pain, the experience that we have. That's true. That's true. I really do. Let's That's let's true. talk a little bit about um we're gonna go to the music side of things, um, and okay. talk about um your walking away from the universal records deal. How was that mentally and what what was God saying to you to make you walk away from something that I'm sure a lot of people, especially independent artists, are that that's their goal. They want to be mainstream, they wanna be you know, connected with major labels like this. What was going on with you mentally um, in that moment when God said, nope, I got a different plan for you? Listen, Dr. T, first of all, who, I mean, first of all, I thought I was crazy, you know, but it was like, <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, it it was basically like, okay, if you don't walk away from this, this is what's going to happen. Um, yeah. Because being a babe in Christ um, is mm-hmm. where, you're like really sensitive to God and God begins to show you things. And oh, so yeah. he was basically showing me if you indulge in this lifestyle, you'll be like this one or that one or this one. And you're not equipped for that because that's not where I'm calling you to. Now, yeah. in my head space, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm walking away from this. How is my group going to feel? You know, how how is the management going to feel? Um, because I was actually signed, mind you, we were signed into contracts you know, as far as um, the label that I was a part of. Um, mm-hmm. But God worked that thing out where even the, the label, the, the executive, he couldn't fight against it. You know, he was yeah. just like, go ahead and do whatever it is God's calling you to do. And he was even trying to uh, get me to just be an independent artist as a gospel artist. 
Wow. Um, I think the hardest thing for me at that moment was the fact that I had built such a bond um, with the people that were in the group with me mm-hmm. and then um, having to leave that bond. I think that was the yeah. hardest thing for me. Everything else was pretty much easy, but that was the hardest part for me. You know, that's 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 a great um, talking point right there. Um, when you talk about leaving the comfort of the people that surround you, that you've been with this whole time, you know, and God calls you to a new place. That's one, that is one of the hardest places and positions to be in um, when we have to leave relationships or let go of relationships um, so that God can really do what he's going to do in our lives. And sometimes we hold on too tight and we don't understand why God wants to strip that from us and i believe that in in the stripping process in the removing process is not meaning that um you will never be a part of that person's life or or you can never minister to them or you can never uh you know y'all can never come back together but the thing is there's always a time of um tearing down and rebuilding and in the place that you were talking about um um, being around these people, that's your comfort zone. Um, answer this question truthfully. Would you be able to truly walk in God and do and, and uh, answer to God and do what he has called you to do um, if you're still around the people that you had a totally different life, you talked a totally different way? Uh, be honest and say, and I'm saying that in a sense of everybody listening, um, are you really – going to be effective with those people when you're in the breaking process, when God is doing the stripping? No, not at all. Um, When God is doing the stripping, you will definitely not be effective to those people. Um, You will actually be an infection um, because, you know, you're actually at that point where God is stripping you and breaking you. And so um, a lot of us, when we go through the breaking and we go through the crushing, um, you get to see all the nastiness come out of us and so you begin to affect them because you're saying now i I represent god and i'm a witness to god but the the word says he that witness souls is wise but you have no wisdom at that moment if you're you're operating from a fleshly realm because you're so a lot of times we get so busy caught up into the crushing and stuff like that that we actually stop looking towards god for um the instructions or stop looking Mm -hmm. towards god for for okay what's my next move or what's my next yeah. assignment? And so what what happens is we start operating in our flesh and we say, oh, we're Christians. But then they start seeing all of the nastiness leaking out of you and they don't want to have anything to do with the God that you're serving. I oh, hope yeah. that makes sense. It does. But you, you know that that's why a lot, a lot of people uh, shy away from Christianity. Um, people live in the way they do um, to where they don't attend church and stuff and still claim to be Christian don't fully give their lives and are okay with that. You know, um, I've lived that way, you know, uh, kind of living by my own definition of what a Christian is supposed to be, you know, or um, being radical or throwing radical on it, saying, you know, I can still do this, I can still do that, and I can right. still be a Christian, you know what I mean? Right, right, so right. So that, that is so very common, and I think when we have groups of people that we're familiar with, even in church groups, I, I, and I'm not just talking about worldly um, connections. I'm talking about within the church. If you're within the church and you have this comfort group, you have the, these people that may look up to you, that, that may, you know, they know what you're doing or what you've done. They can't receive from you. So <clears throat> God will still at times break you away from those who are in the church as well, because y'all may not be lifting each other up. Y'all may be uh, keeping each other in that net negative place because nobody is lifting anybody. Everybody's on the same wavelength, you know, and that can be a very dangerous place to be in. It it definitely can be a dangerous place. Um, And and I think that's a a lot of the reason why, um, you know, we see so much going on in the church now is because of exactly what you just said. But if there's, if, if even in that breaking point, if there were more people that were really saying, okay, God, I, I feel you breaking me or I feel you crushing me. Now let me fully surrender to this breaking and this crushing so that I don't become 
became an infection to my sisters and my brothers, but yeah. I become, you know, what you calling me to do so that I can go back and minister or witness effectively to those mm-hmm. that may still be caught up in whatever it is, you know, mm-hmm. that they're caught up in. So, yeah. um, but, but one thing, um, I wanted to say, and it was right before we shifted into this, is um, there was a minister, and I will never forget this, and she said this to me, and and this may be for for somebody else, that's why it keeps replaying, but she said to me, she said, a lot of times relationships, uh, we get into relationships, and it's like when you go to the store, um, you buy all this stuff, and it has expiration dates, and we put it in the refrigerator, and just like that milk that you put in the refrigerator, it has an expiration date. And when you wow. try to use it past this expiration date, you you get a stench from it. And that's what happens in relationships. If we hold on to them too long, we get a stench from those relationships. And it's not that God wasn't speaking to you all along. It's not that the date yeah. on the milk wasn't speaking to you all along. It's that you chose to ignore it. Yes, yes. And that's because, again, we, we go back to the word comfort. It's, it's yeah. where we're comfortable at. Um, But when God uses us when when God breaks us, the reason He has to break us is because we're going to be in a a place in a position that He wants us to have no control. He right. wants to have all the control, and we and He needs us to be dependent on Him. So if we're in a comfort zone or around people that are coddling us, so to speak, um, or keeping us in that place, then um, let's let's even get away from relationships. Just talk about personally. Um, you you're not grabbing for the comfort anymore. You're not grabbing for other people's advice. You're not just running to the pastor because, you know, he has all the answers, but you're solely depending on God to give you what you need. Mm-hmm. That's an uncomfortable place. It's an yes, uncomfortable it place, but it's the place that God does the most work. Yes, it is. It is the place actually where you really begin to find your true identity. Mm. Um, and for me, um i can i can speak on that because um for you for coming in as a babe um if i could just back up for a second coming in as a babe in christ um people always saw the anointing and so they always gravitated to the anointing and always use the anointing without mm-hmm. actually dealing with the fact that my soul is my soul is realm still needed some work um oh, yeah. and so I went through seasons after seasons after seasons where leaders pulled on just the gift and the anointing, and and oh, oh, man. oh we'll yes. we'll deal with that later. We'll deal with that later. But yeah. let's go up and minister this. Way. But I'm broken. I'm hurting here. And so, yeah. um, just recently, um, and, and this has been um since 2001. But just um recently, in the last two and a half years. God said, okay, I'm removing the crutches from you. I'm removing the wow. relationships from you. I'm I'm isolating you because I really need you to get the fact that I am God, I'm sovereign, and that I have full control, like you said, in your life. And if you don't allow me to have full control in your life, then you will never maximize the potential that I put on the inside of you, mm-hmm. where you're always looking to other people when your answers lie in me. And I had to get that you know and and i'm not saying that i'm perfect that i've arrived because sometimes you know you do um have those moments where you're like oh my gosh like and you try to reach out for best friend and best friend's not there or mom you know but um even in that god is still you know working and grooming with me um and i'm saying that to somebody else that even in those moments where you might miss it god is still working with you if you work with him but um it really took that moment to just walk away and step away and and God begins to show me my identity and that's of course how the ministry of um um became forward you know because God said okay I you I've grace I I bro, I'm breaking you but it's in grace you know um yeah. so that you can walk out the assignment that I have for your life oh yes that that's that's beautiful because now you're in a place the where you see I always I always tell um, others, it's like, don't be so focused on the fact that you um, had to go through an experience. Be focused on the fact that you went through that experience and now you can talk about it and help somebody else. And that broken place, that that place where God and ice 
isolates you. Um, he just told me the other day, let's have a transparent moment because I've been in a season where God has been breaking and shifting and removing things out of my life and removing crutches, so to speak, like you talked about, out of my life. And um, I had to learn how to stand on my own because mm-hmm. for a good period of time, I didn't know how to do that. And people can look at me and look at, you know, my life, what I do, and all those different things and confuse that with the real deal. <laughs> and they they don't see that what's behind there. They don't see, um, you know, know any hurt happening any anything unless I choose to be crazy and put it on Facebook or something like that Um, (laughs) but you know they don't choose they don't see that stuff they don't see those broken and I don't always think it's necessary to show people that um until you're in a place where you're strong enough to you know minister through that and use that as a, a, a a weapon instead of a pity party or or something like that so sometimes I think we have to be in that place but God was taking me through a season and he is taking me through a season and he's teaching me true dependence on him. He's Mm -hmm. teaching me that because I know a cycle that I had to break in my life since I've been younger um, is uh, uh, latching on and clinging to what was comfort to me because Mm -hmm. I needed somebody in my life that, um, could kind of baby me, so to speak. You know, mm-hmm. I can have my temper tantrums and all that kind of stuff with that person. That person can pat me on the back and say, oh, it's going to be okay. You know, but not really pour into me. So it's, it's so many, it, it's hard to find a place like that, uh, people like that, people would be around you like that, that can really, you know, give you what you need and help you to come out and grow. Instead, they, they're another mom or another daddy or, you know, and, and I look for those in relationships in ministry as well. You know, you, you have your spiritual uh, mother and your father, but at the same time, I got to grow up at some point and be able to talk and go to God for myself, hear from him for myself, because it's, it's he's going to give me something in that quiet time in that isolated time that no one else can give me. That's true. That's true. I think that's Absolutely. very, very important. I, I think we miss a lot. We miss a lot when we don't see that. We need that. Need that time with him. That's true. I, and I think that's a, a beautiful thing. I think it's a beautiful journey that you're going through. And I, you know, I just want to encourage you, even as you're going through it, um, just to continue to, you know, press and trust God. Uh, for um, what He's doing. You know, I love the. You know, I love the fact that um he's um he's an artist you know and everybody is not the same you know um Um, and he takes us through different journeys and different things to make mm -hmm. that specific masterpiece that he's called you to be and um Um, i believe that you're you're getting ready to see some beautiful things in your life that you never really mm -hmm. imagined you know absolutely um i'm already seeing it i'm already seeing you know those those things that i wouldn't otherwise have seen because my focus was so on, you know, whatever it is I was experiencing. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard thing um, to recognize that and, and put that on yourself and say, I need help. Um, God, yeah. please, you know, I need you. Like, I was at a point um, not too long ago where I had to say, God, if you don't do something, you know, <laughs> uh, you got to do something. Like, do you see this right now? Do you do you feel me right now you know really? also know that jesus um went through um some of these things he was he he was uh he experienced it yet without sin so i'm, I'm like if you know how i feel you know you yes. know what i'm going through you know the things that i can't talk about you know, know the 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 um things that i need don't leave me out here don't right. leave me out here to die <laughs> so to speak. and <laughs> if that's how i I'm like, God, I'm in the desert. Come get me. You know, you have all the answers that I need. I didn't realize that I was I was in a position to where I was opening up to God and, and up in, in doing a thing that I hadn't done in so long and something that he had been waiting on me to do was 
say, God, I surrender. Give me what you can give me because what I'm doing and how I'm going about doing things, it ain't working. That's and I realize good. that now. So, God, now I'm open. And sometimes it takes us to get to that, that place where we're, we're doing it at all. And God say, okay, I'm going to let you do it. Go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> you know, I'm the, one, I'm the one that gave you the gift, but you go ahead. You go ahead and do that. You know, he, he knows that at some point we're going to fail and we're going to have to go back to him. Go back to that first love. Go back to that because we dismiss him. It's not that I've ever denounced him or ever said, no, God ain't real or I'm that, you know, just God just get on my nerves. I never uh, got to a point where I said, you know, God uh, is not in my life. God is not valid in my life. God is not present in my life. I n- never got to that point. But I lived in a way that God was, I knew about God, but I didn't have him living in a comfortable place place in me. It was a place that I poured so much stuff in there that grieved him, you know, and I'm like, I didn't consider him when I start bringing stuff in. I didn't consider him when I was doing what I wanted to do. I didn't consider him that he was present living with me and I was bringing stuff into our house. Hmm. And that, that's a, that's a hard place to be, but at the same time, it's the beautiful place to be so beautiful okay (laughs) crazy point of um um oh i see i see the um message there um you have anything to the point of just encouraging somebody that especially in the music industry that has been um that has been going through, so to speak, this type of struggle just in a place where they need God, they need that alone time. Um and and we're and they that God is calling to a different place, but they can't make that move. They can't make that that next step. What would you say to encourage that person, that artist, that songwriter, that that author, that whoever they are in God? What would you say to them? Um, uh, first I would tell them breathe, um, because a lot of times when we, when we deal with life and we get overwhelmed, we don't breathe. Um, we actually, um, you know, we just, we just keep saying, oh, this is happening. That's happening. This, uh, we start looking at all the negative things instead of just taking the time, um, to breathe. And when I say breathe as an artist, you should also always be connected, especially if you're a gospel artist, you should always be connected to the father's heart. So that means in praise and worship um that's your moment to breathe that's your moment to exhale that's your moment to say god look this is my frustration this person may be mad this is your time that's your time to be real and worship with Mm god um even Mm -hmm. if you don't have the words to say you know when you begin to cry god hears that because um those silent tears are still prayers to him um a a lot of times um one of my friends like to call it liquid prayers but Mm -hmm. You you um you have to breathe, and then at the same token of time, um you have to take those moments for self care. Um, and I found okay. that that was very um for me, um because I had to I had to have those moments because I'm always a giver. So I'm I'm yeah. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm always a giver. I'm always saying, oh, let me help you with your business. Let me help you do this. Let me help you do that. Let me help you. But putting myself always on a back burner. And if you're an artist like that, um a lot of times. Sometimes you you get frustrated with people, but the frustration should really be with yourself because yes. you haven't done self care. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, when I have had to come to that realization, okay, I have to do self care. So if that means I have to cut my phone off for two hours and just really just spend time with God and write, or if I have have to um, get in my car and I don't care if I have five dollars for gas, but just drive somewhere where I can just you know um, sit out in the car. Or in in the park or somewhere, you know, me and God, and just have that time. Um, you have to do self care because that's what, that's what's going to keep you focused. That's what's going to keep you grounded, um, along mm-hmm. with breathing. And then at the okay. same token, in time, um, there has to be that one person that you find 
that that's an accountability partner um, that's that's going to say to you the truth, whether you want to hear it or not. Yeah. Um, and, and they're they're not going to sugarcoat it and you know give you graham crackers with the, the sugar like we talked about at the beginning. Um, but they're gonna they're gonna give you the you know the Brussels sprouts and things like that. Um, and mm-hmm. then they're gonna step back. They're not going to be that crutch for you, but they're going to step back and say, okay, now it's you and God. You know, I gave you what God yeah. said. Now I'm going to push back. So you have, those are the things that's going to keep you uh, in, in those moments, you know, where you're dealing with um, everything that we've talked about um, tonight, you know, um, in those moments, um, breathing. Um, and I, I have to stress that breathing is the number one thing, um, no matter what, no matter what else. You have to breathe. You have to spend that time at the heart of the Father, worshiping, um, because it, it's really your lifeline. And, yeah. um, you know, as an artist, um, a lot of times uh, we get so caught up in the, um, oh, I need you at this church, or I need you here or there. But if you don't have your lifeline, how can you, you really be effective in ministry? Oh, yeah. So. That's a good, very, very good point. Um, know that you got to take care of yourself. And know what yes. that means to be able to take care of yourself because uh, killing yourself, you know, or being there for everybody else, pouring into everybody else, when do you take time to get poured into? When do you take time to, like um, Zion said, to breathe? You know, in those moments, it's in that time that you're pouring back into yourself or you're allowing an opportunity for God to pour back into you because if you deplete yourself, for all that and you don't and you try to keep moving forward you know you're gonna hurt yourself you're gonna be in those 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 times and those moments where you don't have the answer for your own situation and situations could be around going on around you you can be involved or not involved they will still affect you so you need that self-care you need that time you need to be built back up so i don't care what you you're doing your ministry can only be effective if you're healthy that's good it can only be effective if you're healthy i really um i agree wholeheartedly with what um you've been saying zion and i believe that that comes from a place of experience and when we forget about the likes the camera and the action and focus on the relationship with god all the things will be added to us and that's that's um, in this season I've learned as well. I'm really understanding that that place. God wants to give us everything, but it, it can't do it until we're vulnerable and open and committed, submitted to Him, okay. so that He can pour in exactly what you need to make it to where you're going. So many times that He gives us a vision, and He says, "That's where I'm taking you." And what do we do? We take that vision and we're like, "Okay, so." I- <laughs> I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to connect with this person, I need to go here, I need to go there. And we kill ourselves trying to get the vision that God's given us. He said, I already gave you the vision, and I already laid out the steps. But you're missing one important component, and that's spending time with me in order for me to give you the steps to take. The people to be around and connect you with. Come on, somebody. You, if, you, if you really pay attention to how you've um, moved, forward and what God has given you or God has shown you, then you'll know exactly what you need to do. And when you get that hit that plateau, because we all do it. We all hit that plateau. <laughs> Come this on. Is this, this is this. <laughs> oh, for for I mean to 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 piggyback off of that, let me let me share this with you. At, at the time, like Dr. C it wasn't funny. But um um but I do theatrical productions, and so uh-huh. um, we we auditioned, and, and we were like, we were really excited. People came out, and we were like, oh, yeah, okay, we're, we're going to just bring everybody aboard. We didn't see God, right? We just, we're going to bring everybody aboard, you know, because mm-hmm. we was like, we love everybody. And when <laughs> I say we spend so much hell and so much warfare with this wow. production, and yeah. There was a there was a young lady and she operates in the you know prophetic and I I walked into her office and it was just you know I'm thinking I'm I'm there for one thing but I sat down and she said God said you know 
he's going to allow you to finish this production, but next time you need to seek him on exactly who needs to be in the production. <laughs> and I was like, oh, she just read my mail. You know? uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> because it was like, you know, like, you know, I don't go around telling people that, but I, I was at home stressing and worrying and, and having it anxiety attacks and frustrated mm. and aggravated because wow. the wrong people were connected to the vision. And that yes. was because, going back to what you said, you have to see God on every step of the vision or you will shipwreck the vision. And he's just, you know, good like that when he'll allow in his sovereignty for you to, you know, uh, to, to uh, recover from that thing. But um, you're going to go through it. You're going to go through the process, yes. you know, that it takes um, to, to, to get restored back from that thing. So, yes. Yes, ma'am. It's so important. It's so important. Thank you. Yes, that that solidifies it right there. It can be a great thing that you're doing that you, yeah. that God has given you, and it can be a big stage. I remember when He first revealed to me about um, the book, a book that I'm I am to write. He said, "If you give me that opportunity, I'm writing the book for you. Right. Give me that time." And I didn't understand what that meant because when he said write the book I'm like okay so I guess I got to do this this and this and this <laughs> and God stopped me <laughs> he was like no before you put pen to paper I don't care who you talk to I don't care what you think you finna write I'm getting ready to write a story through you come on and so you need to give me a space and the opportunity to do that because if you want it to succeed if you want it to reach the, the masses if you want it to get to a level that I'm showing you you it could get to you gotta let me do it that's good that's good and so i i really encourage especially artists that and and we're gonna wrap up and i'm gonna give you a second to you know let us know how to get in touch with you but as an artist um please please understand this as not even just talking to artists. It's it's just because Zion's here, so I'm I'm trying to keep it in that arena. <laughs> but anybody, you know what? Whatever vision God is giving you, and I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. If God is giving you a vision, that's who you need to seek to fulfill that vision. You know, you need to go to Him for those steps. That's your boss. That's we, we are never without a boss. We are never without a boss. So when once you get to a point where you're making all the decisions, you're not consulting him, that's the moment that you fail. That's, good. that's the moment you fail. You'll never see the level of success that you think you want to get to. Because each level comes with different devils. You know, so <laughs> you, you better be ready for that level. And if you're not seeking God, you better not take that step. Because you're not going to be able to deal with the devil that come on that step. Come attached to that step without God. So just remember that everything that we do, seek him, seek his guidance and understanding, and he will give it to you. I promise you guys, that's where you're going to see success. All right, Diane, please, please, before you leave us today, let us know how um, the listening audience can get in touch with you um, for any interviews. Um, if they want your music, which we will play one, uh, your, uh, one of your songs ready or not tonight um, at the okay. end of this interview. So we're excited to um, to broadcast that. <laughs> we are excited to broadcast that. So please give us um, that information so we can connect with you. Okay, cool. So is Zion Z I O N D A Voice V O I C E, um, and it's on all platforms: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, also on Reverb Nation, uh, Zion the Voice. Um, on SoundCloud, it's um, a guy. I play music, um, and music is spelled with a Z. Um, so, and then we're also on Amazon as well. Um, so we just look forward to connecting with you guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I enjoyed myself thoroughly, uh, Dr. Mm-hmm. T, tonight uh, with you. It was like sitting down on the on the stoop as we say back back home, sitting <laughs> on some living yeah. and talking. You know, so I you know we that. kept you going all day long, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll do that off air. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy having you on, and I pray that the nuggets that were given today um, for the, the listeners that you really receive something, and that this will produce some some amazing fruit in your life. 
um, get what was said. Get it in your spirit and really go forward because we want to see you succeed. We want to see great things happening. We want to see God visible and, and made big in this world as he should be. So I appreciate you, uh, Zion, for coming on and spending a few minutes with us. Um, please, we're going to bring you back, of course. Um, we're going to keep in touch with you, and we're going to um, just follow you, make sure that we're um, doing everything we can to support you uh, here on Positive Power uh, 21. We want to let you know that we appreciate and love you and really, you know, just bless the ministry that God is giving you. Um, keep going forth in it and stay strong and continue doing what God has for you to do. Amen. I receive it. Thank you so much. Amen. All right, folks, that is all for tonight. You were tuned in to Late Night with Dr. Chanel Stewart and our special guest, Miss Zion the Voice. Please make sure you go on and follow her. Um, make sure you show her some love. Share this particular um, interview and make sure that um, you continually share that because because I believe that everything that was shared here will give you and give some of the listeners, your friends and family, some things that they need. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and play um, Miss Zion's single, Ready or Not, and we will see you again next week. Be blessed. You're listening to Dear Slide Worldwide Podcast. know perfectly that the day of the Lord so coming ready or not as a thief in the night will you be ready ready or not Trials and tribulations come with indulgence, it comes from Christ, we came with the flesh. You be numb, numb, that's who your own understanding, who warm, you get this beautiful fire or cold. Holy Ghost can use you, refine the spire, you swear you made it down and purified. My father remains the truth, let every man be a lie. Ready to die at all times, the mark you should possess. When you look at your life, it's the spirit dying you know on your flow. The truth is, we all should be like loaded weapons. But best of spirits, false doctrines, and, and no reverence. And sit the body in Christ, just like a viral low infection. Holy Spirit to witchcraft, cash behind the pulpit. And the culprit ain't the devil. Look up in your own eyes. Most obsession plus people feeding your spirit lies. Calling all the remnant, would you please stand up? Would you please stand up? Stand up. Ready or not, you can hide, you can run. Gonna find you. Will you be ready? Ready or not, you can hide, you can run. It's gonna find you. Will you be ready? Crucify daily, daily you die. When the crash you live, eternal glow versus eternal damnation. Oh, Reaping what you sow, so into the spirit. Spiritual harvest in this which you gain, but in the flesh, absorb a mess of the sign for your own demise. Jesus Christ is coming back, man. Open your eyes. The devil's got you locked up on his agenda. Will you be the one or will you be straight pretending? Living your life no way that this the way it should be. For God is coming for a bride now without a spot or a rainbow. Will you be entering the gates of heaven or the gates of hell? Let the truth prevail. Got a story to tell about my Jesus Christ, the one who loves so well. But he He's the same guy that catch you in the lake of fire. If you don't get it right before you expire, expire. If you don't get it right before you expire, expire. If you don't get it right before you expire. Ready or not, you can't hide, you can't run. You're gonna find you.
I ain't here to argue about his facial features. 